Welcome back. This is Dr. Ray Humphrey, and we're going to do a discourse tracing today from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, through chapter 5, verse 6. And it talks about Jesus as our great high priest. So let's go ahead and dive in. And here in chapter 4, verse 14, we read, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let's hold firmly to our confession. Now that's an inference right there. When you have a sense in the first clause, that usually sets up an inference. So since this is true, then this. Okay? Now let's go down. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things, just as we are, yet without sin. Okay? So let's take a look at this saying about, about our high priest and sin. So we see that our high priest, Jesus, has been tempted in all things, just as we are. Yet, that's a concessive. You can see that there in the, in the concessive relationship, yet without sin. So he was tempted in all things, just like us, but one thing is not like us, he did not sin. And then, take a look at this relationship. We do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize but one who has been tempted. So the idea there is because of the temptation that Jesus endured, he can sympathize. So this is a negative positive. We don't have a high priest who can't sympathize. We do have a high priest who can because he has been tempted and tried. Therefore, let's approach the throne of grace with confidence. That's an action manner that tells us how we are to approach the throne of grace so that we may find mercy, so, we, so that we may receive mercy and find grace for help at the time of need. That's a temporal, so we're going to find grace and mercy in the time of need, okay? Now, how do those connect? So we've got to sow that here, and that, that gives an action-purpose relationship. So let's approach the throne of grace, sow that for the purpose that we would receive mercy and find grace. Okay, now let's connect these two clauses. So, we do not have a high priest that can't sympathize, but one who's been tempted, therefore. Okay, so that therefore draws an inference. So, therefore, let's approach the throne of grace because we have a sympathetic high priest. Now let's connect the first sentence to what follows. This is an idea explanation. You've got a for here, which in Greek is the conjunction gar. Now that can signal a ground, and oftentimes it does. Uh, but here, it's better to take it as an idea explanation because this clause is explaining our high priest. We have a great high priest, and he passed through the heavens. And now we find out we do not have a high priest that cannot sympathize, but our great high priest is sympathetic, okay? And so what we have here is we have an inference that's explained by another inference. Now let's go down to verse 1 of chapter 5. And we see that every high priest taken from among men is appointed on behalf of God in things pertaining to God in order to offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. So we see here that now we've transitioned to talking about human priests, the Aaronic priesthood. So every high priest taken from among men is appointed in order. In order. That's an action purpose. Action purpose, he is appointed, and the purpose for which he's appointed is to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. <clears throat> we read that he can deal gently with the ignorant and misguided, since he himself also is clothed in weakness and because of it, he is obligated to offer sacrifices for sins for himself as well as for the people. So we see here in the human priesthood, we see a sympathetic priest similarly to how Jesus is sympathetic. However, the human priest does sin. So let's take a look at this. So um, we see that he's offering sacrifices for himself as well as the people. That is a series. It just tells you um, 
who he's offering sacrifices for himself and his people. And we see this, the, the earthly high priest contrasted with our great high priest who's in the heavens, our, the earthly high priest is clothed in weakness. He's not a great high priest. He's a weak priest. Okay, and then this idea of weakness is explained because he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins. That's, that's why he's weak. So now we see here, he can deal ignorantly with the ignorant and misguided since he himself is also clothed with weakness. So just as Jesus is sympathetic because he was tempted yet without sin, earthly priests can be sympathetic because they are, they are tempted and they do sin. So it's, the difference is that Jesus doesn't sin, but in both regards, an earthly priest and an incarnated divine priest is able to sympathize with us. Now, this, this material here about the priest's sin explains the idea that he's taken uh, from among men and appointed on behalf of people to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. That's explained in that he's able to minister on behalf of people because of his sins, and he has to offer sacrifices for his sins as well. Now we see no one takes the honor for himself but receives it when he is called by God, just as Aaron was. So there's no such thing as a priest that just takes it on himself. He has to be appointed by God. And he draws from this, the writer of Hebrews draws from this, that Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a priest, but he was appointed by God. And he cites the Old Testament here, and it says, but it was, but it was he who said to him, you are my son, today I have fathered you. Just as he also says in another passage, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. I love this because it's, uh, I think we can identify with the author of Hebrews here because it seems that he has forgotten his scripture reference. And he says, it says in another passage. So I, I think that's, I think that's um, a consolation to us sometimes when we, when we don't remember where these passages come from. But it actually comes from Psalm 110, verse 4. So this is a series, a series of quotations uh, about the Son, okay? And this series serves a positive, a negative positive relationship. So Jesus did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest. That's a negative statement. But positively, he was appointed by God. All right, and that corresponds to the same thing about the earthly priest who doesn't take the honor for himself but is appointed by God. And this is a comparison where earthly priests are being directly compared to the great high priest. And in both cases, they must be appointed by God. Let's connect this to the previous section as a progression. Okay, so how is this a progression? It's a progression in, in the writer of Hebrews' logic um, that every high priest taken from among men is appointed on behalf of people um, in things pertaining to God. So it's talking about here the fact that God appoints the priest to minister for people. The argument progresses to the idea that Christ is appointed as a priest. Okay? And now let's connect the entire thing. The first section is grounded by the second. So the first section talks about our great high priest who is sympathetic. That is grounded in the pattern of the earthly priesthood in which the priest is also sympathetic. And then the argument progresses from there to talk about how the priesthood comes about. Um, the priests do not appoint themselves. They are appointed by God to minister on behalf of sinners and just as that's true of the earthly priest, it's true of our great high priest who is appointed by God to not only be our priest, but to be our atonement.